today that you had? Are you pretty like depleted at this point? Yeah. So, I mean, food's dropped the last few days, um, but today is like a low, low day. You know, we're just climbing under the weight cap. Um, we're at a decent bit heavier than we expected to be. Um, I mean, you know, Toronto was the shortest I've ever been, um, and that's the, the reason. You know, so me and Carl, we just don't want to play any games, and we're just getting under that. At two twenty seven again, um, so finishing touches, you know, travel was, travel was an experience, uh, not 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 the smoothest journey to to Vegas, but the layover was nice, you know, training in Toronto and Pierre, they're always really accommodating, seeing all the guys and everything. So, but yeah, we're settled in now. So this is the first full day in Vegas. Um, trained last night, but yeah, man, it's literally just been flying, sleeping for a couple hours, eating protein and fats, and training. <laughs> that's that's been it. So. Settled in now, finally. Hell yeah, man. So uh, what are you at right now in terms of like a fasted weight? So this morning I was 230 um, on the dot. So just losing those last three pounds. But, you know, before I flew, I was like 236. So I've dropped six, six pounds um, just just before that. And like I said, we're about three, three pounds heavier from where I was from Toronto. Um, and I ended up weighing in at 222 there. Um, like I said, maybe what three, four days out, I was two thirty-three. So I'm, I'm assuming that probably tomorrow I'll be about two twenty-five, two twenty-four, somewhere around there. You know, about one or two pounds heavier. Definitely a lot bigger. I'll um, I'll send you some pictures after this, some uh, some exclusive shots, man, because we're just going through it today, posing practice. You know, and, and resting is the name of the game. Just so while we drop drop this little bit of weight. Yeah, absolutely, bro. So you you mentioned there's a weight difference between now and Toronto. Mm -hmm. So um, you've had a few months to kind of just like dial things in for this Olympia prep. What do you think is the difference in that weight? Like what body parts may it be going into? Is so like a different form is? I think definitely the arms. I think that especially when you compare to Toronto, my arms, um, a little bit more lap, lap thickness as well um, from the front shots. I think my back has just consistently improved anyway. Um, it's one of those things that, you know, when I started out as a pro, it was a massive, um, like, you know, weak point on my physique. So I've paid a lot of attention to it and it's just been continuously getting better. But I think, like, in terms of in terms of specifics, my conditioning it is better than Toronto. Um, I mean, you can go on my Instagram right now and see the shots, you know, from a week ago, from... I've, I... So... As far as like check-ins, I hit the condition I had on the day of Toronto two weeks ago. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, you'll see a much more conditioned version of me than Toronto, um, and just I'm definitely bigger everywhere. Um, but like noticeably, the arms um, and the lat lat thickness. Oh, well, that's that's uh, dangerous, man. The improved condition plus those yeah. uh, those improvements, man. I think uh, I think it goes without saying you're already a threat, but like. Mm -hmm. You know, having worked on those specific things and made those improvements, man, I definitely think uh, you're. I, I released the the dark horse videos, and I yeah. think you know you you were in one of those, and a lot of people are, um, you know, regarding you pretty highly, man. Like, yeah, as of right now, I think you sit at the top of like the, you know, the the UK guys. Um, yeah, because I think Dabul is you know representing Kuwait now. Yeah, I was going to say, obviously, Michael, I mean, he resides here sometimes, but I don't think he was born in Britain anyway. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure he was born, yeah, in Syria. Um, so, yeah, of, of all the Brits anyway, I'm the, I mean, the last one to make it to the Olympia was Neil Curry, I believe, um, the 2022 Olympia. So, obviously, rest in peace. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm the first one to make it since, since then. So, yeah, I'll happily agree with that. <laughs> Yeah, man, how does it feel like representing like your home country and just like also what does it feel like to know you're about to make your debut here? In it's crazy, debut? man. Like obviously, you know, the last few days have been a whirlwind because, you know, obviously you, you, you've competed before, you know how meticulous everything is. Um, and then obviously with the travel, but it has kind of started to hit me that I, I just kind of reflecting on, you know, where I was even two or three years ago. Um, and honestly, I wasn't, I wanted to, but I wasn't sure that would make it to the Olympia this year. Like if, if I think if you asked me reason, reasonably, I would have said um, after I got my pro card, I, I said I'd like to be doing my first Olympia at like 25, 26, uh, 2025, 2026. 
So to hit it from the first show, you know, with Carl, like right after the Arnold, uh, the first show that we jump into is Toronto, have like a pretty dominant win there, and then, you know, straight to the Olympias, it has caught me off guard. And yeah, man, I mean, representing our country, we only have um, seven Olympians, I believe, this year across all divisions. Um, we have the least of all countries entering pretty much. Um, we've got four men. So obviously you've got me. Um, I believe we've got one other men's physique guy. We've got Ryan Terry, of course. Um, and then I think we have just Samson. Samson, yeah. So across all divisions, to be one of four is 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 not bad. And we have a lot of good pros back home. So, you know, it's um, it's a good feeling to kind of know you're in the, the elite, elite few there. But yeah, it's just been a lot of reflection, man. Like to you know where I come, where I came from, not being like financially well off, and bodybuilding is hard enough anyway. So to kind of be at this point, and you know my life's headed in a great direction. Um, you know I feel like I have a lot of positive influence on a younger generation. I'm kind of introducing them to, you know, more and more people into competing and you know coming to the IFBB, the MPC. Um, it's it's just a dream come true at the minute. Yeah. Just looking at some of the the old photos, I know Yemi posted some from uh, yeah. that, that pro day view you had at the mm -hmm. the Arnold UK back in twenty twenty two. It's crazy to look at some of those photos, man. Like, yeah. what do you think looking back on some of that stuff? So you made your your pro debut after winning the the British in twenty twenty two to get your pro card, and then you took the stage with guys like Wesley, yeah, um, Michael was that. Uh, yeah, I mean, Zangarello great. was in that lineup, and now he's dominating two twelve shows. You know, I think mm -hmm. he'll probably be in the top five, six, maybe it's like top five, six, seven at this Olympia. He looks crazy, but yeah, I mean that was. I think I got my, even though you know I've been quite open about how it did sting to get last place because as an amateur I did very very well. Like I won't hide that. Uh, my worst place in as an amateur was second one time. Every other show I did, uh, whatever federation. Whatever class, I was always the overall winner um, every single time. So, you know, it, it didn't make me lazy or anything. In fact, it was almost a bit scary because once you set that standard, you know, you you want to maintain it. You are like, once you've won an overall, it stings to, to not win one again. So I think that, you know, from the Arnold, going from being a man, like every pro experience is that pretty much, you know, you, you're the man, you win the overall, you know, the pages are posting you a new pro. You jump into a show where there's like three, four Olympians and you, you know, you're getting smoked and the judges have gone from looking at you and complimenting you to not even glancing at you because Wesley Bizzers is there, like you said, Michael De Bull's there, you know, um, to like top Olympians. So I think that the benefit I got from that was I realized I really needed to up my game in my conditioning. Um, and then also I won't be starstruck at the Olympia, you know, I've had a I've already done my big show. I'm not just there to take part. That was the show where, you know, Jay Cutler was backstage. Ronnie Coleman was backstage. Flex Wheeler was coming and talking with me. Sean Ray, um, you know, obviously getting to see Andrew Jacked, Martin, James Hollingshead compete. Like I said, other top Olympians like, like Michael, like Wesley. I mean, I've been, you know, following Wesley and watching Wesley since I was 19 years old or something. Um, you know, I wasn't even, I hadn't even done the show yet. Competing wasn't even in my mind and I saw him at an expo and thought, you know, damn, can someone ever be that big? And that was, you know, years ago. He's much bigger now. So, yeah, I think the good thing is um, I've got the sort of mental clarity going into the Olympia. I don't have the sort of, oh, like, you know, I'm, I'm going to be starstruck by these guys or the big bright lights. I've, like I said, I've done a, I've done a big show, so I, I definitely feel mentally, mentally ready for it. Yeah, and I'm curious what what your thoughts are on this. So given the the depth of the lineup, I mean, it's it's going to be the best lineup of Olympians yeah. in classic in history from top to bottom. I mean, even in that, you know, 15 who are going to place because only 15 guys place. Um, so in terms of just how big the lineup is, do you think that takes some of the pressure off as well? Just knowing it's like, you know, there's 60 guys in this I'm, lineup. I mean, yeah, I was, I was talking about it with Yemi a few days ago and I said, this will really be the first Olympia where for classic everyone who places is like you know of such a high level sometimes you know you'll have in the past you've had Olympias where maybe you get to ninth to 11th and then there's a few places after that where it's there's some good guys but they're you know not without their flaws and you're going to be looking at a top 15 who 
almost you'll probably probably all have their own group of fans saying how's this guy not third how's this guy not pushing us how's this guy not pushing you know they should have put this guy next to Ramon and all oh, this guy's got a better this body part than Wesley so it's like yeah I mean not necessarily this pressure I know that I, I believe and I know that I can you know do damage and make a real statement um, at this Olympia and I'm going in sort of you know I'm, I've been more confident day by day and it's almost just like if I can go and do well at you know the the most competitive classic physique competition in history um, you know that'll be a great feeling yeah absolutely bro so in terms of your goals for this olympia it's your olympia debut you won the toronto pro this year and like like we said it's going to be a, a crazy deep lineup the mm -hmm. best ever what are your specific goals or expectations heading into this so as far as a specific placing i haven't like I've, i mean i've never um being someone it's either like you know i've just wanted to win or I've, I've never really gone into a show apart from the Arnold. The Arnold, I just wanted to go for the experience. You know, every show I've done, I've like, I've trained to win. Now I'm not stupid, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be Chris. It's not, you know, I, I don't, I don't think I'm there yet. I, I've, you know, had one, one real show as a pro, two pro competitions and two years as, as a pro bodybuilder. Um, so as far as a specific place, and I don't have one, it's more in my mind, people that I want to, um stand against and ultimately what i really really wanted and i said to cal was i know we prepped for a shorter amount of time than toronto but i want my condition to be better and i want my physique to be better you know i just want for me if i can get back on stage you know three months later and people to say holy shit because they did that from the arnold to toronto you know people were comparing my pictures saying that transformation was insane and that was 15 months 16 months and i feel like as a professional bodybuilder, every pro should come back 15 months later and, you know, be completely different or, or drastically improved. Unless, you know, you, you're you very late in your career. Someone like Brion, you know, as long as he's consistent, you know, that's that's an achievement, I think, when you're in your mid-40s. But for someone like myself, you know, in my, my uh, mid-20s, I feel like if I can come back from one show that was, like I said, it was my best ever look and a dominant, a dominant showing, and then I can just absolutely wipe the floor with that um, at the Olympia. That's kind of my own personal goal. Now, as far as placings, like I said, I'd, if I can place, I'll be really, really happy with that alone. I don't have any kind of specific goal because, like you said, it's, what, do we have 57 competitors, I think? Um, yeah, I think 50, it was 57 yesterday, and then I think another guy yeah. missed out. He's also, it's looking like maybe 50. Well, that's what I mean. But, uh, yeah, 50, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I can't have a number. I've not competed against, I don't think I've competed against any of the guys doing the Olympia this year. None of them were at Toronto. Uh, but quickly shout out, you know, Andre Andrea, because he he was third, I think, at Toronto. He just qualified last week for next year's Olympia. But um, there's people that I want to stand next to. You know, I'd love to be able to get a comparison with Yosema, uh, Justin, you know. Basically, I think all the newer guys like myself, that it's either, you know, our, our, our pro kind of debut or our first win or our Olympia debut, the younger guys that people are talking about, like myself, I'm I'm really interested in being able to stand against them. Luca as well, who won a German uh, German pro, you know, those guys I'd love to be able to stand against and kind of see where we're at. Yeah, it's it's very exciting, man. And you talk about the improvements that you've made and the focus of this Olympia being to just bring an improved physique. What went into both the improvements that you made from your pro debut back at the Arnold UK in 2022 to the Toronto Pro this year, which you won, and then also the improvements that you're bringing from Toronto to the Olympia? What kind of went into that? What was your uh, strategy and what was also um, the work that went into that? So from, from the Arnold to Toronto, I lived my off season as if it was a prep. You know, I woke up at the same time had the same habits, worked on everything, the little things I didn't like. Um, not many people might know this, but go going into the Arnold, I couldn't hit a vacuum because my waist was small. I'd never needed to. Um, so I, I just, I, you know, I really made sure that I worked on my vacuums. And I think when you look at Toronto, you know, my vacuums, I have very good developed abs. I've always 
worked on my, my core development, but I think being able to utilize both with a small midsection, I'll, you know, I mean, I'll say, I think I'll probably have the smallest waist at the Olympia um, of, of the men, at least in classic anyway. So I feel like if I have, you know, a very, very small waist, my quad sweep the way it is, my shoulder width, um, like I said, my core development and a vacuum, you know, it's like a triple threat as far as the midsection is concerned, which is a huge part of aesthetics. Um, you know, training, I, I again, just kind of made sure I'm always trying to find ways to make training harder and harder. And, you know, I, I got to train with Dorian Yates the year before I turned pro and he kind of, you know, a lot of people mess up his training philosophy. He was just a very strong guy. It's not about, you know, throwing the plates on and screaming and just trying to wrap everything out. It's about very, very intense intention on a muscle to, you know, to improve it. And that's something, like I said, I spent over a year on, um, which is why my body was so different when I, when I came back. Um, and yeah, literally just, I, li I lived, it was, it was very, um, I, I can't really think of the word, but unreasonable almost how long I stuck to my diet. I took no breaks. You know, I slept the same amount. I was up every morning, was consistently getting better at training. Um, you know, mine and Carl's communication was perfect. When you do that, like when you have that kind of focus, a pr basically a prep focus for over a year, you know, something, something is, 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 is going to change. And then from there, uh, so from the Toronto to the Olympia, I just kind of had that, that Phil Heath mindset. So this was something where I've never really settled on my wins anyway. I don't relax after a show and kind of look at the pictures and talk about, you know, the wins and, and, and post throwbacks. I mean, if you, I posted a reel of me in Toronto and I think that's the first time I've posted anything from Toronto since July. Um, you know, I'm not really the kind of person to, to post um, old stuff because I don't really look at it. I'm always looking forward. Um, but something that I really carried was um, the Phil Heath mindset where he talked about, you know, every time he won an Olympia, it's like, right, now I have to be crazier and more intense than the version of me that just won that Olympia. So it was, it was a case of that, you know, doing cardio a little bit faster, you know, practice imposing a little bit longer, you know, training, just trying to be even more present and, even more intense in my training methods, just just more of everything. Um, and, and again, more controlled aggression of it as well. So that's why I think I, I managed to, you know, grow basically in, in a short, very, very short off season, I think five weeks that we had, and I've somehow managed to come back with bigger arms. I'll, I'll, t I'll take it, you know? Yeah, absolutely, bro. Um, so in terms of open olympia i don't know how closely you follow the yeah open. I, I love i love open bodybuilding <laughs> so let's uh let's have some fun here um mm -hmm. who are your top three at the open olympia this year i'm just curious so my top three i've, I've really been thinking on this um i have in third i really i really you know i can't make up my mind between andrew and samson at third Initially, I actually did have Andrew because of Texas, but I really think that Samson has improved his body a lot um, from the France show. His back was, you know, finally had showed the improvements. As far as the conditioning um, or the peak, you know, I, I don't think he did anything for that. I think that, you know, he did, he knew what was enough as far as conditioning. Um, and I think it's a case of which of those guys really brings the condition because they're both bigger. They've both improved there's both visible improvements on pretty much all poses for them. So it's going to be, you know, they're the, both, they're the shape guys, they're huge, tall, the shapes there, which one is, is going to be the sharper of the two, which one's going to give more of a freakish look. Um, I'm going to put my, my money on Samson simply because Andrew hasn't beat him yet. And it's almost like a safe bet. Um, and I, I also know that, you know, Samson has had a lot more criticism and drama around him this year. And, I think he's the kind of person that will utilize that the right way, you know, like someone like Phil Heath did where, you know, people would give him shit and give him drama all year long and he'd just come back even more dominant, even better every year. And I think that Samson has the ability to do that. Now, in second, I am going to put Derek. And the only reason I'm going to put Derek in second is because Hadi just blew me away um, with the two, the two Arnold looks. And I think that 
obviously we all know what Hadi's mentality is like. He can go on his Instagram. I mean, he was squatting, what, like seven, six, seven plates last week, I think, which is, is ridiculous. Um, and I think that Hardy will come back with Avengers. Now, I could be wrong. Derek has drastically improved as well. Uh, like I said, this is an extremely close top two um, with those guys. But I do think that Hardy is going to show something even better um, than what we saw at the, at the two Arnolds earlier this year. Bold, man. I love it. I, I do think that it's going to be a, a killer matchup yet again, man. That that hottie Samson Derek three man like battle is always nuts, and Andrew being in that mix yeah. is gonna be even more interesting. I'm very um, excited to see Raphael as well. Raphael has mm, yeah. been looking crazy, and Martin Martin's Martin's probably got my favorite physique um, aside from Andrew, as far as I like, just to like look at. I feel like you know. Seeing him at New York and stuff was, was just awesome. So I'm really excited to see how he does. I mean, the whole lineup, you know, I'm a fan of pretty much everyone that's doing this um, Open Olympia, and I can't wait to see. I, I just can't wait to see it in person, really. Yeah, very exciting. Wish I could be there, too. Yeah. Uh, so before before we wrap things up, um, just curious um, if there's anything you want to say to the people who've been following you, the people who – have been supporting you because it seems like you know your fan base is continually growing on a daily. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm I'm really really grateful for it. Like I said, where I came where I came from, it was not. I've been doing Instagram um, and posting my fitness journey for since 2018. So, you know, so if, let's say last year it kind of started to take off a decent bit, and then this year, you know, it's been crazy. Uh, I don't think people realize how much the support does for pro bodybuilders. You know, we can get more opportunities. Um, off, you know, obviously financial, like gain from it is for for me. It has really been life changing. You know, even um, you know, I remember just following you back in the day when I didn't have my pro card yet, and you know, you were you were getting going, and now like whenever I see a tag or a mention or anything, I always you know, it's just always always crazy to me, and see myself on like pages like RX Muscle or Buys and Tries. I mean, Greg Doucette made a video, um, you know, with with me in his top five, which was was uh insane to see so i i always always appreciate the support um and yeah you know if any of you guys see me if, if you're here for the week in vegas just you know please come up to me say hi i may seem exhausted because i am but i'm never um you know i'm never not open to just you know taking a picture or having conversation whatever it is um like i said i'm living my dream right now so i just want you all like all you guys watching to know how much it means to me that I'm living my dream because realistically without the fans, bodybuilders can't live any kind of, any kind of dream, to be honest, any kind of lifestyle like this. Yeah. Very well said, man. And, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time, bro. It, it really oh, means no, a lot, no. especially being three days out and whatnot. Yeah. It's a, a grueling yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. Man, with that now, I, like I said, I'll, I'll show you some updates, man, just so that, um you know that they're not i'm not all talk because i don't want to be one of those you know who's every everybody will says the bigger every show um but you know i mean i can confirm it with the scale weight and being like this you know um like i said we weigh in tomorrow morning I can finally get some carbs back in my body and <laughs> and come back to life because um, i've never seen myself this depleted um, and it's quite nice to see you know when when i would flatten out through through previous preps my arms would just disappear. They would come back once I had some carbs in, but to be as depleted and as flat and as conditioned as I am now and have, you know, improved arms from Toronto is a good sign because I, I even I don't know what I'm going to look like when we start carbing up, you know? <laughs> yeah, man, that makes things really exciting. Um, but that's going to do it for the interview today, guys. Uh, this is Niall Darwin. We had a, a, a very informal start. We wanted to keep this as candid as possible. But um, in case if you guys aren't aware, one of the best up-and-coming classic physique athletes in the world, Toronto Pro Champ this year. You guys can find him on Instagram. I'll put that down in the description. It's mm -hmm. One Punch Naz, um, if you guys hear me referring to him as Naz. So um, that's where you guys can find him. Make sure you guys go support him there. Um, check out his sponsors. And um, that's going to do it, guys. I'm Brant, and that's Niall. For CPC guys. Signing out.